right, so I want to just do a quick little video today, a quick little video, and if you saw the title, the title of this is Flammable Vapors, Flammable Vapors, and so this was an idea that came to me as I was uh, working in my basement, and I saw a warning label actually on my water heater. I have a, a gas water heater, and there's this warning label on there that says danger, and then underneath it says flammable vapors. And it looks like this picture that I'm drawing for you here. Very simple, uh, quick picture. But the idea I had when I saw that was that your soul, everyone's soul, is like a flammable vapor. Uh, in James 4.14, it describes our life being like a vapor. It's here and gone. That's what James 4.14 says. Your life is is like a vapor. And the sad reality is that your life as a vapor is also flammable. You say, how's that? Because I, I can get in a fire and burn? Well, your body can burn, but Jesus said, don't fear them that can destroy the body, but them that can destroy body and soul in hell. Isaiah 66, 24 tells us that the saints are actually going to visit those that died without God, without Jesus Christ, in their life, those that were not saved. It says their worm won't die, they'll be an abhorrent to all flesh, and their fire will not be quenched. Their fire. So see, they're going to have a fire in their being. Your soul's going to go somewhere for all of eternity. Will it go to be with God in heaven, or will it go to the lake of fire? The book of Revelation tells us that there's a judgment day coming, and Jesus Christ is the one that's going to be the judge. Now, there's two judgments, and saved people go to a judgment with Jesus Christ, but lost people also go to the judgment seat that is the great white throne. And Jesus is in his seat up on that throne, and he will judge all the dead that died without being saved. And he will judge them, and when it's done, they'll be cast into the lake of fire. Now, there's different levels of, of torture and punishment, but everyone burns that dies lost and winds up at that judgment. So that's why I say, you, yourself, are a flammable vapor, and you're in danger. You're in danger. Now, how do you get out of this danger that you're in? You are a vapor, we've already discussed that, and you're flammable. You can go to hell, and you can be cast in the lake of fire forever. How do you get out of this danger, though, that you're in? It's very simple. Jesus Christ. Man makes it complicated. It's actually very simple. I was talking with my wife about this the other day. And she said salvation is actually very, very simple. And the Bible said, but for years I had confusion and doubt and, and issues like that because people wanted to make it so difficult. They say, well, did you have the right kind of repentance? How did you feel? And they, they add all this stuff in that maybe was a part of their experience when they got saved, but they want to make their experience doctrine, and it doesn't work that way. Salvation, according to the Bible, is very simple. Number one, realize your need for a Savior. Why do you even need to be saved in the first place? I mean, you're a pretty good person, right? Maybe by the world's standards, you're a pretty good person. But by God's standards, we're all vile. We're all wicked. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. That's what God has to say about you. You realize you have a sin problem, then what do you do? Well, you come to the Savior, right? There's a sin debt to be paid, but you can't ever pay it. So you need someone else to pay it for you. Jesus Christ paid that penalty at Calvary's cross. He took the penalty of sin upon himself, the sin of the world. Not just the elect, Calvinist. He took the sins of the world upon himself on the cross. He died for those sins. He was a perfect replacement. Now, if you have the blood applied to you, propitiation makes it so that when God sees you, he sees his son. His son's acceptable. You are not acceptable as a sinner. You deserve hellfire. But if God looks at you and sees his son, who was perfect, had a perfect record, and he sees that record applicable to you, then you're welcome in heaven and you don't have to burn. Our God is a consuming fire, but he's made arrangements where you can dwell with him and you don't have to burn. So... Are you in danger? Yes, you're in danger. You are a flammable vapor.
but there's a solution to the problem. And his name is Jesus Christ. And what must you believe about Jesus Christ? Not just that he's a savior, but you must believe that he died, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to the scripture. That is the gospel according to Paul. He wrote about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. You can go read that. That's the gospel. Very simple. You agree with God about the sin that you know you're guilty of. It offends him. You deserve to go to hell for it. You agree with God about that, but you want the cure. You want the payment for the sins so that you don't have to burn. You realize you're a flammable vapor, but you don't want to burn. The solution is to come to Jesus Christ. Your life is just a vapor. It's here and gone. So there's nothing in this life that's worth going to hell for. Because this life, it, it's so short. But you will spend eternity somewhere after this life. And you, you should prepare to spend it with God. Get saved, and that's just the beginning. You want to serve God. You don't want to show up. I said there's two judgments. There's a judgment of saved people to see what they did with their salvation, with their relationship with God. If it was just about uh, not having to burn, they're going to show up bankrupt at the judgment seat. He, ha he will be saved, but he's not going to have anything to show for it. You want to have something to show for it. First, you need to be saved, and then you need to serve Jesus Christ with your life. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. Like I said, I tried to make just a real short, simple video, presenting with the gospel, give you some things to think about, and I hope that the Lord will use this to speak to some people that need to hear the gospel message and need to get serious about their souls and do business with God. That's my hope and prayer with these, these messages. God bless.